The Republican Party controls no real levers of power in Washington. They have yet to settle on any national leadership at all. They did come up with a Republican budget proposal in the House of Representatives, and 38 House Republicans even voted against that. The GOP, in other words, is clearly in exile. But the conservative movement has found a reason to live. They have found something about which they feel very positive, something they are ready to rally around. I speak, of course, of teabagging. Angry taxpayers, or at least some of them, are taking to the streets in the spirit of the Boston Tea Party. More than 250 locations in all 50 states will hold rallies on April 15th. Americans sick of government ballots and wasteful spending, taking their message to the streets, and it's spreading fast. We're all over it. They're going to try and send tea bags to D.C. D.C. Uh, tea bag the White House. Tea bag the fools in D.C. Tea bagging. After spending weeks mailing tea bags to members of Congress, conservative activists next week say they plan to hold tea parties to proverbially tea bag the White House. And they don't want to tea bag alone, if that's even possible. They want you to start tea bagging too. They want you to tea bag Obama on Twitter. They want you to, quote, send your tea bag and tea bag Obama on Facebook. They want you to teabag liberal Dems before they teabag you. And all this non-consensual conservative activist teabagging is just the start. All across America on tax day, Republican members of Congress are lining up to speak at teabag tea party events. Even Governor Mark Sanford of South Carolina is getting in on the hot teabagging action. Senator David Vitter of Louisiana, previously most famous for his self-admitted very serious sin with prostitution services. He wants to give teabagging the Senate seal of approval. He has asked the Senate to commemorate the day of anti-Obama protests in law. In terms of now, no laughing offset or I will lose it. I'm only barely making it through as it is. All right. Ready? <clears throat> In terms of media, our colleagues at Fox News are not just reporting on teabagging, they are officially promoting it. Celebrate with Fox News. This is what we're doing uh, next Wednesday. We want to be with you and your tea party. If you have a tea party anywhere that we're not covering one of those, email me at glennbeck at foxnews.com. We may cover your tea party live on April 15th. Fox News Channel has described the tax day events on screen as FNC tax day tea parties. And they are dispatching some of their hosts to take part in the teabagging. But amid the celebration of inchoate right-wing bad feelings and the denunciation of taxes, spare a thought for the man who you'd think might have the most to gain from harnessing the power of mass organized public teabagging. That, of course, would be Republican Party Chairman Michael Steele. Mr. Steele apparently asked to address a teabag tea party event in Chicago next week, but organizers turned him down saying that he is welcome to show up at the event, but not welcome to speak. The organizers did say that they thought the event would be, quote, a fantastic time for Chairman Steele to listen to what we have to say. Though presumably if he is being teabagged while doing so, the message will be a bit muffled. Joining us now, Air America's national correspondent and Daily Beast contributor, Anna Marie Cox. Anna Marie, thank you for being here. Good to be here, Rachel. The Boston Tea Party was about taxation without representation, right? The protests planned for tax day are about the plan to go back to the Clinton era tax rates for rich people. Is, is that the purpose of these and is that the parallel they're trying to draw? Well, it's the parallel they're trying to draw, Rachel, but you know, it is true that teabaggers are grossly underrepresented in Congress. Um, I'm trying to work on that personally, but you know, <laughs> well, one can only do so much. I think David Vitter really is the right spokesman for the movement, though. There, that's a, a point well taken, and which I was afraid to allude to, and that's why you're here because you're braver than I am. Um, so, so many Republicans are addressing the tax day teabag parties. Michael Steele has been rejected. Is he not considered a true teabagger by the movement? Well, you know, he said in that, that GQ interview that he thought teabagging wasn't a choice, that you couldn't change whether or not you would be a teabagger. I think the teabaggers now really believe that it's something that they've chosen to do, that they, can't, that they, they could change if they wanted to, um, but they won't. Well, I, in terms of what's going to happen on tax day and what's been happening with the teabagging of Congress, which has been happening through the mail, which I don't even know is possible, um, 
I've sort of never really believed that you can be held responsible for the people who say they agree with you. So we've had this enthusiasm expressed for the teabagging events by white power groups like Stormfront and by the secessionists and by the armed militias. And I don't think you can really hold the teabaggers responsible for that. But is there a radical message here? I mean, the whole idea here is about revolution, sort of, right? Well, yes. I mean, I, I think that, they, that the people, the teabaggers would like it to be uh, more radical than it is. But the fact is, people have been teabagging for a long time, and they probably will continue to do so. Fair enough. Um, most of the energy of these events seems anti-Obama. You saw all the you know, Facebook and Twitter things, teabag Obama, teabag Obama. Uh, but then there's the rejection of Michael Steele. And I wonder if there's also a chance that this sort of gets channeled into being uh, you know, teabag Arlen Specter, teabag John McCain, against Republicans who voted for any of the bailouts. Well, who wouldn't want to teabag John McCain? That's all I have to say. But I really think, actually, it's probably going to be more directed at Obama. And this is, this is actually very much part of, I think, the midterm strategy. You know it's going to be teabagging, like, 24-7 when it comes to the midterms. Well, is, is there an effort to divide the conservative movement from the Republican Party once again, though? Because there is something about the origin of the current Republican Party that owes very much to the conservative movement, which was not organized within the party. It was sort of organized without and then took it over. I wonder if they're trying to cleave themselves again and say, no, we're teabaggers and you're not. And we're therefore the future of the we're the, we're the future of the right wing. You could say there's a big split between the tea bags. I, I think that you're right. I think they're, they're the social tea baggers and, and sort of the fiscal tea baggers are really starting to move apart from each other. I actually just heard from standards we're not allowed to talk about fiscal tea bags, but thank you for bringing it up. Anna Marie Cox of Air America Radio and the Daily Beast. It is always wonderful to have you on the show, particularly more tonight than ever. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Rachel.